In this course, I will introduce the notion of composite states. As you can imagine, if we have a big state chart, the number of states and the number of transitions between all of these states can easily explode. Um, to cope with this, we can use the notion of composite states that encapsulate multiple states inside. Uh, to show this example, I have taken the clock uh, state chart, which I've slightly modified to have two types of uh, display, displaying the hours and display mode, uh, minutes, with a mode uh, event to, to cycle between both. And then I have two uh, set states, set hour and set minutes, that can be used by using the set buttons and then clicking on mode to increment the hour or the minutes. So now uh, I will modify this uh, example in a stepwise fashion by introducing two composite states. The first one, which I will call set, will encapsulate both uh, set states, set hour and minutes. So I will do this here by creating the composite set state and inserting both set states inside. So I'm moving them just around here. Uh, I will do the same by creating a display state in which I will encapsulate the display hour and display minutes states. Okay, so make it a bit bigger, put them inside. Like this. Okay. So if we now look at uh, the new state uh, chart, nothing really has changed with respect to the original state chart. It's just that uh, some states have been encapsulated in other states. <coughs> I will go one step further uh, because now we can see that okay, some states, uh, so we can put the initial states inside. So now display hour has become the initial state of the display state. Uh, so at the top level, we no longer have an initial state, so we can add a new one, which I can add here. and which I can link to the display state. This means that we will start in the display composite state, which has by itself also a display hour initial state. So we will, when we start our substate of the display state. I will also uh, do some modifications in the set state. So rather than always go back from display hour through set and back again, or from display minutes through set and back again, I will uh, change the behavior so it becomes more uh, cyclic. Whenever we click on set, we can go to set hour. When we click on set again, we can go to set minutes. And when we then click on set again, we can go to uh, display minutes. This will avoid us having uh, needing multiple set arrows back. So like this, the design becomes uh, slightly simpler. So now we have <coughs> two composite states. Uh, and if we run this uh, simulation, we can see what happens. Okay, there's still some error here because I forgot to remove some initial state that was still floating around somehow. So let's run it again. When we start, we are in the display hour state. Uh, when I click on mode, I will go to the display minutes state and back again. When I click on set, I will go from the display hour state to the set hour state. As you can see, with composite state, we are always in a superposition of two states, the composite state and one of its uh, substates. So I can click on set again to cycle to set minutes and then on set again to go back from set minutes to display minutes. <coughs> so, so far the use of uh, composite states. Let's now make the example 
are interesting by adding uh, the notion of a history state. So uh, what I can do is, uh, rather than uh, going back from set minutes to display minutes, uh, we can be a little bit smarter and we can put a history state here, to which we will direct this arrow. Okay, now there is a small error here that says that uh, it's not possible to have two uh, pseudo states, uh, most no uh, notably the initial state and history state, within the same uh, composite state. There's still an error here, but this can be resolved by explicitly giving another name uh, to this history state. So I'm going to the properties view. And here in the model, I can give the name of the property. Let's say that it's a history state. Like this, there is no confusion between the history state and the initial state. You can see that uh, pseudo state can have three different types. Initial state, shallow history, or deep history. For now, let's just, just uh, stick with shallow history and explain what is doing. Okay? So, what happens now is, whenever we go from set minutes back, to the display state, we in fact go to the history state, and this has the effect of going back to the last visited substate. So if we used to be in the display hour state before, we will still be in the display hour state when we come back, and whenever if we used to be in display minutes state before going to the set composite state, when we come back uh, to the history state, we will still be in display minutes. So let me show how this works. So again, I will do the simulation. So I'm now in display hour. Let's first do simulation view and move to the display minute state. So this is now the last visited state of the display complete state. Whenever I uh, launch set, Okay, here we already see a problem. I cannot really launch set from display minutes because it's only available in display hour. Uh, so I will have to make another modification first. I will first have to move this set transition so that it goes from the dis uh, is not going transition from the display composite state. What's the effect of this change? This change basically says that. Uh, wherever we are in the substate, substates of display, regardless of whether we are in display hour or in display minutes, if we receive the transition, uh, if we receive the event set, then to set hour. So this one will be a substate. Uh, so now that we have this, made this additional change and I run the simulation again, Okay, so let me first go to the display minutes state and then I trigger the set event which will allow me to go to set hour. If I trigger once again the set, I will go to and now if I once again trigger the transition set, which is this one here, I will go back to the history state and this will bring me back to the last visited substate of display which was display minutes, as you can see here. To show that it's indeed a history state, uh, I can do the same by first putting myself in display hour, and then do the same again. So I go from the display composite state to set, and more specifically set hour by following the set transition. Then if I follow transition to set minutes, and once again for the set to go back to the history state, I will return in the last visited substate of display, namely display hour, as you can see here. <coughs> so, uh, this we see the use of history states, um, make the behavior simpler in some cases. I stop the simulation again. Um, what I can also do if we, if we would like to avoid the effect of having 
a transition going from a composite state directly inside a, a substate of another composite state. I can avoid this by moving this transition to the super state level, like this. And then, of course, again, the state chart is complaining because, in that case, I need to add an additional initial state here that points to this first state. <coughs> so this has exactly the same effect as what we had before, except that now uh, the set transition goes from display to set, and it's the initial state here that decides that the first state to visit inside set is the set hour state, just like display hour is the first state to visit inside the display state. So this is a very simple example in which you see the use of composite states. Uh, now suppose we want to extend the clock example, for example, with other types of display, or we want to extend the clock with other types of sets, like setting the seconds or displaying the seconds. Uh, we can do this locally by just making modifications inside the display state, just locally inside the set. Uh, state. So this makes things uh, easier and more uh, modular.